When we think about when a post-pyloric feeding tube should be used, it is important to note that gastric feeding is used as the first-line therapy in most medical institutions. This is because it aligns with the normal digestive process and is easier to place at the bedside. A post-pyloric feeding tube is used when gastric feeding is unsafe or poorly tolerated. This includes a high risk for aspiration, like when a patient is with mechanical ventilation or neurologic deficits, patients with gastroparesis, which can be a complication of diabetes, infection, and surgery, when there are changes to the patient's anatomy, like with an esophagectomy, gastrectomy, and bariatric surgery, and when there is a mechanical obstruction, which can occur from peptic ulcer disease, pancreatitis, and a bazaar. Nevertheless, just because a patient is at a high risk for aspiration or has gastroparesis, it does not always mean a post-pyloric feeding tube is going to be placed. In many instances, the patient will receive a gastric feeding tube first and be assessed for tolerance. When this happens, steps must be taken to reduce the risk for aspiration and promote tolerance to tube feeding. A responsible clinician will elevate the head of bed to 30 to 45 degrees, choose a continuous feeding method, consider a prokinetic agent to enhance gastric emptying, and monitor closely for signs and symptoms of intolerances like abdominal distension and vomiting. If these steps are taken and the patient tolerates the feeds well, then the feeding tube can remain in the stomach. If these steps are taken and the patient develops poor tolerance, the feeding tube should be advanced to the small intestine. Thank you for watching. Check out these videos for more content just like this.